Hi there, Simon from Simon Woods. Don't come here. I have uh, two handsome bottles here, uh, hopefully of uh, uh, handsome wines. They are from uh, Chateau d'Esclin uh, in, in, in Provence, in, in, in southern France. Uh, and it's their top rosé, Garus. And it's also their top red. Actually, they only do one red. Um, and uh, so um, I'll just dig into them. Um, and uh, yeah, this Garus, I'm not sure, this is 2014 vintage. I'm not sure how many vintages of this they've done now. Maybe it was something like 2000 and... Uh, I want to say 2007. I might be a year or two out there. But um, uh, the goal of the, the guy who set it up, um, Sasha Lachine, was to make the best rosé in the world. And uh, now he does uh, four rosés. Uh, there's a uh, bottom one's called Whispering Angel, uh, next one's called uh, Rock Angel, then there's one called Les Clans, and uh, this is the top one, and weighing in at uh, about 70 to 80 quid in the UK, so uh, not, a, um, not your bog standard everyday rosé by any means. When I've tasted it in the past, what's uh, impressed me is that... Um, it's one of those rosés that you want to decant, you want to watch over uh, the course of, uh, uh, of of quite a few hours to see how it's evolved. And uh, uh, I remember one vintage tasting it over two or three days, and it was amazing how much it, it came out of its shell. Uh, it's been aged in the way that um, uh, great white burgundies get, so it's had uh, uh, barrel fermentation and um, yeah, a little bit of, uh, and, then, and then further time in barrel to, uh, to soften. So I stick my nose in there. And uh, there's a few things that come out. One of them is the, 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 I get this salty, savoury tang. Uh, there's a little bit of, um, the main grape here is Grenache, but there's a little bit of um, uh, Vermentino, or Roll, as it's, uh, it's called in Provence in there. Don't know whether it's that that's giving a slightly salty, um, sandy t uh, tang to the wine. Then there's this peachy character, uh, a peachiness that you associate with uh, uh, riper, riper Chardonnays, uh, riper white Burgundies. Uh, but then the, there are other things in there that are to do with the uh, the elevage. There's, uh, there's a slightly smoky oak edge, a bit of vanilla, but um, all very subtle. All very those, those sort of things that caress you and sort of go, hmm, hello, you're going to enjoy this. So uh, I'm going to taste it and see if I enjoy it. Really fine boned, high cheekbone style. Um, lots of flavour. But then this fine streak of both acidity and this salty mineral edge as well. Lovely, delicate, but as I was saying, persistent. It just keeps going, mmm, mmm, you're going to enjoy this. Um, it, so it's, it's 2014 here, we're, we're, we're past the harvest date for 2016, so it's, a, it's two years old. I can't, can't remember how long it had in barrel, but it still feels like it's got some uncurling to do. So um, pretty good now, and I think it's only going to get better. I was looking around for a spittoon, but uh, I can't find one, so I have to swallow it. Hey, shame. Second one um, is D.S. Diane, Diane, um, Côte de Provence. So, so this is 2012 vintage. Not sure of precise proportions here. Oh, God, it's one of those that's got a massive... Well, you can see how far my finger goes up, up the punt. That's not a measure of the quality of the wine, but um, so, some people said, you can. oh, it's the sort of wine you can hide a mouse underneath. Um... Uh, but uh, yeah, wines, the grapes here, Syrah and Mourvedre. I'm not sure of the percentages of each, but uh, let's give this one a whirl. It's one of those that's awash with dark fruit, black currants, um, blackberries, but more on that black currant edge. But there's also this real stony character, uh, as if the black currant had uh, dribbled down a, a layer of slate uh, on the way into, uh, in, into the glass. Uh, there's a, a bit of spice there, a little bit of herby character in, in the background, and some of that same ever so slightly salty tang that I was getting in the in the Garus. It smells like it's going to be grown-up wine. Intense, dark, delicious, but fresh. Uh, there's never anything there that feels um, remotely overripe. Let's have a look at the alcohol. Um, Thirteen and a half percent. Yeah, there is this freshness and there's this stony edge that uh, that just keeps 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 everything really reins it all in. So this juicy, lovely flavour, uh, a little bit of floral character in there with the herbs and the uh, uh, the fruit flavours. But there's this, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps making you think. I'm going to come back for more. One of those where four years old now it looks delicious now. 
uh, but um, has the backbone, has the freshness, and also tannin, acidity, um, oak impact. Well, I mean, there's, I, I, yes, I, I, I think it'll have been, uh, I've had a, a hefty, um, uh, lengthy barrel aging, but there's no imprint of crude oak or anything there. It just feels like a, quite a complete, confident wine. Where I get into a debate with the Provence or the Provence wines is I've got a wine here that's about 70 or 80 quid, and this one's half the price. Uh, it, would I take two bottles of this or one of this? Well, what I would, would say is uh, I can't think of any rosé that's better than this. So uh, as the finest rosé in the world, yeah, non pare. Um, but is it better than the other one? I don't want to get into that argument. I'm just going to say it's different. I love them both. I think they're both really lovely, great wines, and uh, I'm going to enjoy enjoying them later. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon.